you know, we have this temporary string here, and we need to convert it to an integer because we want to run a comparison on it. We can't compare a string to an integer. They're two different data types. So we need to parse it or convert it. We have a built-in function. We can take player guess, and we can call integer parse and pass in temp like we did before. But again, this is a situation where we would want to try and catch because what would happen if they gave us non-numerical data? For instance, if I enter banana and I try to parse it, it's going to throw a number format exception. So remember that try and catch work a bit like uh, if and else, and I'm simply saying try this code here. I'm putting it in braces. And if something does go wrong, instead of crashing, or giving the user an unfriendly error message, the kind of exception I want to catch, which would be a number format exception, and an instance, could be A or X or Zebra or whatever, we'll call it a Zebra, and then what I want to happen. So in this case, on this line, I could do a stack trace or I could just send a message to the console letting me know that was not a number. And even so, if I wanted to, you know, to be safe, if I wasn't sure whether or not I had an initial value, I could say is equal to 1 or 0 or null, you know, some value there. But So I just wanted to try and catch it. And if I do that, notice that, you know, makes the program fail a bit more gracefully. Now it just tells me that was not a number and sets the value to 1 instead of crashing. So that's one way to take our input, and regardless of whether we use an input dialog from a JOption pane or a scanner or a line number reader, we'll still have to parse it. We have to convert it from one type of data to another. And now there's just the comparison. And for a comparison, we need if and else and We can choose to use nesting or um. First, I want to check and see um, is the player guess, does it evaluate to the number? Okay. And if so, again, you guessed it. And if not, as we did before, And let's say we were going to use a little bit of nesting, we could add another if felt structure inside this else. So if they do get it wrong, maybe we'll give them a hint as to whether it was smaller or larger. And I'll just kind of indent these here as well. And and here we'll just say the three possible logic conditions are it evaluates to, it's greater than or less than. So if the player guess is greater than the number, we'll tell them that the number is smaller. And otherwise, the number is bigger. All right. So basic nested if fault structure there to make a decision once we get the number and we've parsed it. So here's sort of our, our basic program here. And let's run that and we'll check the three possible conditions or logic states. And in this case the number that we're guessing is zero. So I'll guess above the number. Sorry, the number is smaller. And let me go ahead and guess again, and this time I'll enter a negative 5. And that tells me the number is bigger. And then let's get the number on the dot, so I'll enter 0. And that tells me you guessed it. So we're meeting those, those logic conditions there. Let's just look at a, a few more examples. Um, let's make this a little bit more interesting. Um, 
and we'll change the value of the number let's make the number lucky number seven and let's say we want to give them three guesses here okay so we'll use a repetition structure and we have to think well what code do we want to repeat and in this case we, we kind of want everything from here where the JAP champagne input dialog pops up and ask them all the way down so in this example let's say we use a while true loop and you don't have to indent but I'm just doing that to help you know so you can kind of see where one block of code ends and another block begins okay there's our else and this closes our while true and I'll just add a comment tag down here so there's sort of our while true loop now we need a condition up here we need so I'm going to create an integer, call it counter, and I'll just say, well, counter is less than three. We'll add one to it. I need to make sure that I do this in the body of the wall true loop. So this will happen three times, and this still leaves much room for improvement because if they guess it there's no way to you know to exit this loop but let, let's just see if it gives us at least three opportunities to guess the number and then we'll look at maybe some other things we can do to try to reach a sentinel value or let me see See, there's our wall true. Oh, chopped off our main function brace there. And then that would close our class. So we'll build this and run through it. And let's start in the middle. And it's telling us the number is bigger. And then we guessed at 5. And let's go to 10 the number is smaller and let's go to 7 here and then we guessed it so it's looping it's repeating three times but the problem is what if we what if we get lucky what if we guess the number the first time if I enter a 7 it's going to tell me I guessed it but it's still going to keep giving me two more guesses so in this situation this is where we want to give give it a sort of a sentinel value or an exit condition an exit value here and there's several ways we could do that um, I could hard code this with the keyword called break and if I guess you know we'll compile this and run it but if I guess it and it encounters the keyword break it will force it to exit out of the wall true loop so I'll guess 7 which is the number and then that'll exit out of the wall true loop and a lot of people do that but sometimes that's considered bad form what you want to do instead is manipulate the counter because you know there may be situations where break is a bit of a kludge or you don't want it to always happen that way so how could another way to get you know to reach the exit condition of the sentinel value would be to just manipulate counter so if we simply said counter is three it would no longer be less than three so what would happen in the loop process if I guess at the first time counter gets set to 3, it gets down here to the bottom of the wall true loop, comes up here, evaluates the condition, and then, well, okay, it's no longer less than 3, it is 3, so it would not repeat, it would stop. Let's test that. So we could use break, but in addition to using break, we could also basically give it the sentinel value, and that becomes the exit condition for that loop.